is Ramesh, uh, uh, Ramesh Padala. I'm part of uh, BCG, the consulting company. Uh, I'm part of a team called BCGX, uh, which is the build and growth part of BCG. We do a lot of consulting on uh, not only building new entities within large companies, but also growing existing companies. So that's where we do a lot of work around AI and marketing. And uh, we, with me, I have uh, uh, Akshat. Maybe you can introduce yourself real quick. Hello, hello. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Akshat Singhal from Dangal Play. Dangal Play is an OTD platform from Dangal TV. Uh, and Dangal TV is a Hindi uh, TV channel in India. Uh, yeah, and we use a lot of AI technologies uh, to for marketing, from marketing to user personalization and sending notifications. So it's a critical part of our business. Thank you. Ankit, yeah. yeah. Hi, um, my name is Ankit Banga. I head FCB6. Uh, FCB6 is a digital marketing firm. It's an integrated digital marketing firm leading into creative media and technology and data. Yeah. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ankit Goenka, and I head customer experience for Bajaj Alien General Insurance Company. Uh, when you look at our uh, company uh, globally in the general insurance space, we rank eighth as the most digitized insurer. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sandeep. Uh, I'm the cluster head for Bayer Consumer Health for South Asia. Uh, consumer health meaning we basically uh, work on management, nutrition, etc. You would have heard of our, uh, a famous brand, Saradon, uh, that belongs to us. And we have many other nutrition and skincare brands. Glad to be here. I'll take this one. Hi everyone, Rajesh Chopra. Uh, I lead the services business. For MasterCard in South Asia. So anything to do with value added services around consulting, risk management, artificial intelligence, or a lot of marketing solutions. So, you know, teams operating out of India looking forward to a great discussion on AI and how we can really transform uh, future and you know the extent which we can go. So, you know, an exciting panel. Thank you everyone. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very exciting. I mean, AI has taken over the world, especially with last one year where we have seen Gen AI make a very big impact. Uh, so we'd love to get here from the panel uh, some success stories uh, which are very specific to maybe your experience in current company or more recent companies. Uh, we'd love to hear how you are leveraging AI and how that made a big difference in what you're doing in terms of marketing. So uh, we could start with you, Akshat. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, recently, uh, we saw so KPI was to increase call to action, CTA, right? So if we wanted user to click on the thumbnail. Earlier, so what we did, we, I asked the graphic team to create four thumbnails for every, every video. And through AI machine learning, they used to suggest correct thumbnail to the correct person because it knew that, that if, if you're watching crime, you need you need some blood in the in the thumbnail. Then only you'll click. So we started providing four thumbnails on each video, and that way we got our CTR increase to by like 25, 30 percent. And even we started the same practice on YouTube as well. So YouTube also has a feature where uh, we YouTube selects the best thumbnail out of three for each video, and like they show correct thumbnail to the correct person. So that way we were able to increase our CTR by like 25, 30 percent. I think Ramesh has directly come to the point. He's like, tell us what you have done before you make any other comment. But uh, yeah, so uh, I think I have uh, one very good example to share. Um, recently, we did this campaign, um, which was, so basically, scams in India are rising, and financial scams are at its peak, right? We all are facing it in some form or the other um, through messages, calls, etc. Um, so one of our client, which is uh, India's largest private sector bank, reached out to us, uh, you know, highlighting this as a big problem and, and wanted to figure out how, as a bank, we could take an initiative to make this happen. And this is the time when, you know, um, sales season was on. So people were actually going on, uh, you know, websites to buy products. And we realized that scamsters are actually scamming people online. And we decided to create a campaign which is with the use of AI, which is called Scam the Scammer. And we created a, a Noura Fateh uh, deep fake, um, you know, 
pers personality, which is like a fake ad, and made people click on the ad. And when people clicked on that ad and they went onto the platform, uh, the brand evangelist, which is um, with the vigilante, she came alive and would tell people, hey, don't click on ads which look too good to be true. So, you know, and you have to. So basically, it was a very good use of deep fake. And largely, this is the time when a lot of deep fakes were happening, right, in the country. And we used AI to basically make people aware in a, in a, in a, in a very interesting manner. This actually won uh, a Khan's silver uh, in, at the recent completed Khan's um, uh, awards. Uh, this is one very good application. The second I'll quickly, you know, talk about is, um, so customer support is something that, you know, we've seen uh, very well use of AI. And we've implemented um, a very uh, interesting module which is based on the brand's uh, playbook, right? So a lot of times we face is that the customer executives keep on changing, attrition is happening, people do not know what to respond to when, right? And, and how much of education would you keep doing? So we created an AI model which can actually uh, train, uh, which, which is trained itself with all the product problems, the product statement, the brand language, the brand ethos, and once you put in a statement which could be from anywhere on the internet or on an email or call and say this is the query that the customer is asking, it would give you the most appropriate response, thus eradicating uh, errors and giving you accurate response, making personalization at scale, and, 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 and great, giving a great customer experience. So I think these two are use cases that we've actually implemented and you know, I'm proud of. Yeah. Very cool, yeah. I love the first example. It's like those phishing emails you get at work, and then you're yeah. like, yo, you're fished or something. Yeah, yeah it's actually yes. that, yeah. Go ahead, Ankit, please. Yeah, thanks. Uh, well, well, there are many things, but, you know, uh, since you talked about deepfake and, you know, yeah. kind of avatars, so what we did is, um, you know, for, for a general insurance company or any insurance company, you know, trust is the, is the most uh, difficult part to get, right? Because, you know, you don't really, we were discussing, you don't really get up in the morning you know, thinking that today I'm going to buy an insurance, yeah. right? So it's, it's a tough job, you know, getting that trust uh, built up with the customer. So what we did is we created uh, our CEO's avatar, okay? And, and then, uh, you know, we first tested out internally with our employees, you know, with, with a very basic use case that our CEO avatar is congratulating somebody on the work anniversary or, or a wedding anniversary or a birthday, right? Or somebody is joining, yeah. A doppelganger. Right, and, and then, um, you know, we said that let's now do it with the customers, right? So when, when a new customer is there, you know, and, and the CEO is talking to the customer in an interactive way and explaining the TNCs of an insurance policy, you know, that has really helped us as, as a pilot to get that entire trust built up with those customers and now we are kind of scaling that up, right? So, so that's one of, one of the examples, uh, you know, how we have kind of leveraged AI, deepfake and all. Uh, the, the other on a direct you know, consumer standpoint, you know, you talked about, you know, customer service, right? Customer support, right? So for, for general insurance, one of the lines of business is agri, you know, crop insurance, where, where our customers are our farmers. Now, if I were to tell you that, you know, a farmer interacting with an AI bot, you know, first people will say that, are you really crazy? You know, you really want to do it? But we actually did it, right? Uh, we said that let's do it, let's do the heavy lifting. If it works with the farmers, it's going to work with everyone. Right? So we created this uh, interactive voice bot and, and put it on our you know, call center. Right? And a very simple use case in a, in a crop insurance is that if there is a flood, right, you need to report that as a claim within three days, you know, 72 hours. That's the norm from the government. If you don't do that, you don't get that claim. Right? And, and we know that whenever there is flood, there's going to be huge plethora of calls gonna, that are going to come. And you can't really have those kind of people, you know, as, uh, on the bench as well to kind of, you know, come on the floor and take those calls. And then you could have those call abandons and all those stuff. So this bot actually helped us a lot, right? And, and the farmers are today interacting with this bot. 94% of the claims that are getting registered for these farmers are through this bot. It's only the 6% where the bot is failing, right? Or there is some issue, it's going to the human instantly and then the human is coming and kind of resolving it. But 94% for me, it, it's a great benchmark to achieve and that too with farmers in their local languages, yeah. right? So, so these are the two examples I, I want to give. Yeah, I love the second one, yeah. yeah. Sandeep?
Yeah, I'll just, uh, I mean, while well, there have been many that we've done, uh, very similar to what the previous speakers have, have just spoken about, I'll just talk about one specific use case where um, AI actually did, um, you know, identified a, a data segment or a consumer segment which we were not looking at. So basically, so I'll tell you the problem. The challenge was uh, one of our brands is a painkiller, is a headache brand called Saradon. Uh, so the problem was that we need to enhance. Everyone knows that. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. so the problem was that we need to enhance our engagement. How do we enha enhance the engagement with the consumers? And we were analyzing a lot of data, consumer segments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and through very advanced data analytics, the AI told us that actually your problem is not with the urban centers. Okay, your problem is with the semi-urban centers and the rural centers. That is where you need to enhance your engagement. And the other, the other form of uh, analytics which we did was, it told us that, look, but most of these guys do not have smartphones. So how do you engage with them? Either you do a, like, you know, like a proper advertisement which runs just specifically, or these guys have feature phones. Is there something that you can do to enhance your engagement on the brand using feature phones? And then we actually came up with a very interesting um, idea, which was all around, which is a voice-based uh, solution, voice-based AI solution, which, by the way, won the best digital innovation award on this platform itself last year, E4M platform, uh, where we were now engaging with the semi-urban consumers or consumers who have only feature phones, and hence they don't have uh, any of the apps. So I think many such, such examples using dynamic creative optimization, I think something that you were talking about earlier, about how you can, with the same creative, different cohort, Different message, different context. So, lots of such examples are there. Rocky, Mastercard, great. Uh, yeah. You know, obviously, I can talk about you know two or three use cases. Use cases all the way from you know attrition analysis and how we can predict predict who will be the next best candidate to the application of AI in finance. You know how to predict a next quarter's revenue at the start of the quarter itself with highest accuracy, but. You know, for the sake of conversation today, I'll keep the example more in the marketing field, right? Uh, so, just throwing some numbers, the market in India, right, for AI in marketing is around $12.6 billion, right? And then this market is probably going to grow five to six times to around 70 to $75 billion in the next four or five years. So, a CAGR of 25% plus. So, for all of us and you know many of you, it's a huge opportunity, right? Now, how can we really, you know, explore to leverage this opportunity and you know really make life easier by usage of some of those AI capabilities? I can talk about personalization or hyper personalization, right? Uh, with our job, where a lot of services solutions are sent to end customers, right? Different offers, segments that we have. You know, gone are the days when you just split customers based on their past behaviors, you know, create segments and send them offers. Everyone wants really personalized offers, you know, n equal to one, you know, technically if we say. Now, what does it mean? Every customer should receive something which is hyper personalized to their needs. Now, at the back end, there might be really offers. And this is where one of our capabilities called Shopping Muse, right? Again. And I'll, you know, obviously, it's a renowned world capability where you can have a voice search as well as uh, you know you can really leverage it for personalization. Now, what does it do? For example, right? Any of you is looking for a dress for a party, right? You'll search, okay, a party dress, right? Then you'll probably, in your colloquial language, also say shoes matching with the dress, right? So, like that, accessories. So the app really helps customers to hyper-personalize to their needs, store some of those personalization, and come up with options which really suit. And the highly likelihood is that customers will buy. The response rates or the acceptance will be high. So some of those examples around hyper-personalization is also the way to go uh, in, you know, when, it, when we talk about AI in marketing. Thank you. Fantastic, fantastic. So I uh, just wanted to poll the audience a little bit. Uh, how many of you are on the creative side, like marketing creative side? Quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Uh, and how many of you are worried that AI will take over creativity? Not many, only one. OK. Th I mean, that was actually something on my mind. So uh, 
Uh, see, marketing is uh, one of those things where you want to be unique, right? You talked about hyper-personalization, where you want to have a unique message for Ramesh, right? But also at the same time, you want to be unique as Bajaj Alliance, right? You want to be unique as MasterCard. You want to be unique as Bayer. And, you know, each campaign, you know, we remember, you know, the Fevicol campaigns from the past, right? Uh, and other Cadbury's and campaigns like that, which were like the forefront of creativity. And you see some of them even now. So I would love to get your thoughts, you know, from, in terms of will AI kill creativity or will it, uh, you know, the avatar thing that both a couple of you mentioned actually was very creative, but in a different way. Yeah. So, so would love to get your thoughts. Yeah. See, my, my simple thought around this is, uh, you know, when you talk about creativity as a word, okay, uh, my, my personal take it, it's linked to a human brain and, you know, the, the kind of vision a particular human can have. Uh, the computer cannot have that vision, right? And at the end of the day, we have only created AI. So, so the point is that if you say that AI will take over the creativity or AI will take over the creative jobs, it will in case you are not able to use the AI in the right way. You need to know how to use the AI you know, tools you know, to get your creative you know, thinking in a, in a quick, a much quicker time. You know, the output can, can come much quicker. Mm -hmm. That's where you know, this entire system will help you. If you're going to delegate everything to the AI, obviously creativity is, is nowhere in there, right? So that's my simple take. Yeah. So uh, let me just add a couple of, uh, couple of points here. So, uh, and let me give the pro and con, uh, you know, both, uh, because I'm a very, very strong believer in AI. So where, where does it help you in terms of creativity? Okay, it helps you, it definitely helps you in automation. So what AI does, it takes away all the repetitive mundane tasks, you know, uh, repetition, creating, you know, uh, creating language translations, for example. Mm -hmm. And actually by doing automation, it frees up a really good quality creative time. That's what it does firstly. Okay, uh, it can create scalable content very fast. Okay, if you have, a, if you create a template, for example, all the moment marketing campaigns, which all the creative guys would, would know, uh, the kind of scalability which AI can give you across the 29 states of India, same template, same moment marketing campaign, you know, redeploy, deploy across 29 states in 11 languages or in 22 languages. Yeah. That is something only AI can do. Yeah. It's very so right, if yeah. you look at it as your friend, it can help you. Uh, in terms of, if you look at it as your creative partner, okay, so it is automating work for you. It is augmenting work for you. Uh, if you look at it as a creative partner. Now, if you get into a situation where you expect it to create a long-term strategy for your brand, that is not going to happen. So you need, like, uh, like he said very, very clearly that you need to know where to take its use, where, where to use it, and you need to know where not to use it as well. Yeah, only then will you be able to, you know, take its complete use. The biggest risk of creativity on AI, and I think you mentioned some of the very, very good ads, the Favicol ad, the, the Cadbury's ads and all that. One of the biggest risks is homogenization. If you start creating all your campaigns using AI, they will all start looking very similar because it is based on what has worked in the past. It is based on, I mean, that's where data, data analysis goes wrong also, that it is based on historical trends. So you will never get too many out-of-the-box ideas. You will not, not, never get a Cadbury's ad from there because it will not uh, register to the AI. So that's where the human touch is important. So partnership and having the right balance between human touch and AI, that's the critical thing to use AI better. Yeah, I was just saying that... Uh, AI is not creating the Cadbury ad, right? It's, peop it's the human brain who's actually creating it. So human brain cannot, repl cannot be replaced, uh, that is for sure. Uh, all the tools and everything will coexist, will always be um, complementing you and not be competing with you, right? If that's the uh, way to put across. But uh, what I have seen is that AI is, only, is as good as you are, right? So for example, if you do not put the right kind of prompts, if you do not put the right kind of thinking process, the, the code, the, the, the strategies behind it, AI can't do. And I've seen so many errors that AI puts out because of a wrong input, right? So it's garbage in, garbage out, and garbage in is only by a human brain. So uh, even in all the campaigns that we'll talk about today or in future, it is going to be a human brain. It's going to be only 
uh, built on a technology which is AI. So AI is a technology and it can never replace a human brain. It's just like computers came in 90s and you were like, Are sabki job chali jayegi. It never happened, right? Computers have only helped us grow faster and better in our lives. So just take the same analogy and see today, it's only going to complement and never compete with, in, uh, with the human brain. I think so, like uh, for creative, for creative people, the work's gonna increase only. It's never gonna decrease because they'll have to create multiple options for different cohorts. Uh, for example, if you wanna send an email, email marketing, right? Uh, you will have to create at least like ten emails for different sort of cohorts. Some for some professional, for some, for example, for a product, right? They have, they have like a mass appeal. You will have to create an email for professional people, an email for like some tier three, tier four cities people. So I think so. Through AI, your work's gonna increase only, uh, and AI will select the right creative for correct people. Yeah. Anything to add, or we're good? Good. Okay. Um, so, which areas do you think uh, we should not get into AI? I think that's something uh, like where it will be detrimental to what we are trying to do, right? As marketers, as uh, customer experience uh, uh, people. Yeah, like where do you think it it kind of doesn't serve its purpose and actually you know goes against the purpose? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think a very good question. You know, what should be out of scope or where do we see the ill effects, right, of AI coming? And this is where, you know, one thing which everyone needs to know, there might be a bias, right? That that can come if there's a continuous usage of AI in few of the use cases. Because that incremental bias will really take us far from the reality, right? That, that's the you know, hypothesis that we build in when we say, you know, where AI should not be the piece. Now there is also a component when excessive usage of AI completely removes the emotional connect, right? Out of the entire situation. So, you know, industries where we really feel empathy is key, right? The emotional connect that individuals will have and you know, it is not just a transactional, uh, you know, behavior that is an outcome of application of AI. I think those are the areas where AI should not be leveraged. In fact, we say the ethical AI component is where it will really be, you know, compromised. And that's why I'm sure a lot of organizations and, you know, we are all panelists here have a lot of focus on, you know, how can the ethical usage of AI applications be governed Right? There's a data responsibility that all of us have. We, we invest a lot in, in those components where, yes, there are customers. We need customers' consent on how we use data. Yes, there are customers who would really like to get hyper-personalized experience, but we need to have consent first. This is where you know, we are saying, it's your data. We are going to use it, right? but to your advantage if you allow us to do that. So we can take about many examples across industry and I'll let others also contribute, but there's a huge focus on you know, what to define, you know, to remove the bias, to not, again, deep fakes is you know, one of the examples we have already spoken on, how a certain uh, set of you know, applications just lead to you know, not only a reputational cost, a huge safety concern for a lot of people. Uh, Sandeep, yeah. let, me just, let me just say three very clear areas where I would never involve AI. I think industry should never involve AI. Three very clear areas. One, uh, crisis management. Uh, Capacity management? Crisis. Crisis, uh, crisis management. management. Crisis management, AI should not be. In. AI, you can use AI to help you, but it should not be left to AI entirely, firstly. Second, very complex problems like, like you were saying, uh, which involve any kind of model or ethical dilemma, any kind of moral or ethical dilemma. You know, for example, I'll give you an extreme example. On the surgery table, for example, you know, if you have to choose between uh, who to save, the mother or the kid, for example, if the, the, so that's a very ethical, moral, complex dilemma. If you let AI make the decision for you, it can go completely wrong. And the third area where AI should stay away from is, the, is where, whenever you are on the negotiation table. AI cannot be trusted for negotiation. And you, you can again use it to generate data, etc., for you, but you can't depend on AI to negotiate uh, for you because it can't bring in those human nuances uh, to the table. These are the three areas I would stay away from. Anything to add? Uh, 
I think so. Uh, just one more thing. In data analytics, AI is great at sorting the data. But I don't think so. The analysis part should be left to the AI, right? Because, yeah, I think so. It can miss out some point and give you a wrong analysis. So it can do a great sorting, but analysis should be done by human only. Got it. The human in the middle kind of approach, yes. Yeah. Um, we just have a couple of minutes, so we'd love to hear your thoughts in no particular order. Uh, future of AI in the next uh, two, three years, Gen AI maybe or something else, you know, where do you see it going, right? Especially in the field of marketing. Sure. So I would say, again, three areas. One is ways of working, right? Which means you can always say processes, knowledge management, tech, technology efficient management. You know, that is one area, which definitely we see a lot of future in AI. Second is, we already spoke a lot about personalization. I'll not go, you know, delve further into it. And the third, one of the more important, consumer experience, right? How do consumers experience be enhanced? Because a lot of uh, decisions that consumers are, ba are basing nowadays is, you know, the moment of truth then and the kind of experience they really, you know, feel during those moments of truth. So I would say, these three industries are going to make really big in, in future years. Uh, I'll, I'll put it uh, in a different way. Uh, you know, and I call this uh, strategy as three V's. Okay? Uh, where I say the first V is the voice. And, and voice has two components. One is, the, of course, the voice of the customer. Right? So the entire analysis around that, predictive analysis, speech analytics, and, and all of that. And, and the other part is the entire conversational AI. Right? I, I guess that's going to... Be, be huge in the coming future. The second V is videos, right? Now, now when you're talking about the future, look at the present. Uh, today, generation, they're all on these Instagrams or those, you know, reels and those, you know, shots and all those stuff, right? They'll be our consumers very soon. Now, if you don't have videos for everything, uh, may be missing out a lot, right? So, so videos, as a part of your strategy, needs to be there, and AI can as so the mention you can actually you know fasten your entire turnaround time in, in generating those videos right and and the third keeping the bharat in mind uh, is the vernacular right really going to the language where the, your customer is there and and talking in the customer's language is what ai can can help a lot right so so voice video and being vernacular is is the three v's where i say the ai will will really going to be helpful we're out of times, but uh, yeah. maybe just a single word, <laughs> single. <laughs> rapid fire. No, no, I, I just had one quick part. I think the way we are searching, the way we are exploring the internet, the way we are doing everything in our life is going to get changed, right? Honestly, it is changing as we speak and uh, whether you call it convenience, but all of that is powered by AI, right? No more, I think we're going to, we're going to have actually a search generated results, uh, sorry, AI generated results, which are more uh, conversational in nature as your Google's next step is already announced. So the way you're using your Instagram, the way you're using your YouTube, the way you're searching for things, the way you are here, you know, you're here, you'll be actually able to put up a video on and, and basis what it's showing, you can actually ask questions to so things. The way we actually do everything in our lives is going to get a lot transformed with AI coming in. And the earlier we adapt to tools like read.ai, I'm just giving some names out, but you can try such tools that really, really help you up your game in the way uh, to, uh, you know, AI is evolving. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for spending the time with us. Hopefully, this has been informational.